Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Sand Dog Kayak Adventures and I am Glenn. We have had a lot of requests for today's video. Today we are going to show you everything on my yak. Um, I'm going to break it down into segments. I'm going to show you some super basic setups and then show you my rig when I'm guiding people and making YouTube videos. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I hope you guys enjoy the video. I'm going to put a link to almost everything in the description below. Uh, there are a few things I'm still up in the air about, and I'll go over those things as they come up. Uh, but just about everything I talk about will be linked in the description down below. I'm doing this so if you're an aspiring kayak fisherman, this gives you an opportunity to get a few items here and there. So when you get your yak, you have most or all of your small ticket items and you're ready to fish how you want day one of having your yak. Oh, oh, he's getting pissed. first thing I'm going to show you is a very basic setup um, for if you just want to fish the bay and you know relax and have a nice chill day on the bay not do any really hard fish or anything crazy like that. We'll start with uh, the first thing that you'll need of course uh, by law is you have to have a life vest on board. All right guys we're going to go through these next few things one at a time. Um, they're pretty simple items but they're definitely something you're going to need if you want to even for the basic fishing. Uh, the first thing we're going to start with is the marine radio. Uh, I use the standard horizon uh, HX210. Um, the reason is they float, they're reasonably priced, and they have a little uh, uh, an added feature to where if you drop them in the water when they float they have a beacon that automatically comes on. So if you check it out here I've got a little cup of water here and as you'll see as soon as it gets wet see that light that turns on? It'll turn the radio on and turns that beacon on and believe it or not at night it's really bright it's an LED so that's the reason why I use the standard horizon I recommend that for everybody who uh, wants to get a radio which if you're in a kayak you should have one next thing of course is a pair of needle nose I have an old pair right here I'm actually gonna have a change up but as you can see as long as you keep them oiled up a little bit and take care of them and keep them kind of constantly moving even when they get old they'll still uh, open and shut just fine um, but you'll need a pair of needle nose take the hooks out of any fish's mouth you catch I keep a pair of basically just like fishing shears just something if I need to catch a bunch of lines at once if I get tangled up in something down below that is just a whole bird's nest of garbage I keep these to cut big hunks of line at one time and then of course a pair of fish grips fish grips are good if you're gonna be catching halibut um, uh, you're going to want fish grips because uh, halibut, corvina, and there's a few other fish that you might want to might deal with that have some teeth. So you put these in their mouth, grab them by the lower jaw, and grip them like that. hi ya! And now you've got the fish. You hold them like this. If you watched any of my videos, you've seen this happen plenty of times. Um, but yep, you will need a pair of fish grips. That makes life a lot more easy when you're on the boat. Something else you're going to need um, if you're going to go halibut fishing. Um, or fishing in the big bay or uh, out in the open ocean anywhere you're gonna want a gaff make sure you get something a tennis ball a big cork something to put on the end of the uh, gaff because you don't ever want this thing just flopping around in your boat there's many many a video on YouTube where guys get this stuck somewhere there's actually a video of uh, Robert Field almost getting this in his keister coming in from La Jolla so uh, Yes, get yourself a gaff, make sure you get something to keep on the end of it. That's definitely something you're going to want to get. A dry bag, just to keep your contents dry. Um, 
your wallet, your cell phone, your keys, just some basic stuff. It doesn't have to be this big. Mine's a little bit big. I usually have to carry a lot of, a lot of stuff. But uh, yeah, you want to uh, bring a dry bag and uh, that'll help keep your stuff dry. Trust me, you're going to need it. This is called the fish stick, okay? If you want to keep anything, you're going to have to know if it's legal size or not. This is the easiest thing to carry on your boat to be able to check size. Halibut's 22 inches. Um, a lot of this stuff needs to be re rewritten on here, but right here I have a uh, halibut and ling uh, marked right here. Um, sand bass, sheep's head, it's all kind of wearing off, but this is just an easy device to uh, slap in your lap and throw a fish on and know whether or not he is a keeper. If you want to be strictly catch and release, you do not need one of these. If you don't want to bring any fish that you catch on board ever, you don't need one of these. But if you do want to keep anything you catch, you will need one of these. Another thing that makes life real easy, game clip. Works just like this. Pull it apart like that. Have the fish by the gill right here. It goes up into the gill, out the mouth. Snap this back shut. Snap that back shut, and now you have a rope, a bungee, uh, uh, any sort of cord, whatever, tied to your boat, and you carry around your uh, catch, just like that. Keeps it fresh in the water. Um, you know, it's called a game clip. Now to keep this basic, I've got a bait tube here. This is all for live bait fishing. You know, if you want to bring plastics, you know, you can bring a box of plastics and you don't have to worry about the live bait or anything like that. But live bait works a lot better than plastics. Any fisherman will tell you that. So this is a bait tube. This is how you use it. Basically, this compartment opens up right here. It's got a bunch of perforations and holes all over here. It's kind of solid down over here. Basically, you dump three, four uh, sardines in here, two or three mackerel in here. Shut this. Now it goes on the side of your boat. Bloop. The water from the ocean naturally just fills it up. Now it's like a recirculating bait tank that holds, like I said, four or five sardines, uh, two or three decent mackerel. So you can have that on your boat. Like I said, this is all, this is the basic setup. And I have these guys right here. Um, you can get them on Amazon. They're great, they're affordable. They're great for the bay. Um, I love them. Oh yes. You're gonna be hauling these around in a truck, something like that. More than likely, they're gonna be hanging off the back end of your vehicle more than a foot or two. So you need the old flag. But if you wanna buy a Hobie flag or uh, get a flag, we'll have a link down below. Um, like I said, just about everything is gonna be linked down below uh, in the description. So that, boys and girls, is basically a basic setup. Oh, I forgot one thing, check this out. This is actually pretty important. See this guy? Booyah. Oh yeah. Some sort of extra cushioning for your butt, for your back, for whatever. Um, that is always a bonus. Uh, get yourself a little butt pad, a little something like this. I like having one that has the butt and the back on it because believe me, it makes a lot of difference. If you fish for hours and hours like I do, having a little extra cushion uh, is definitely a good thing. So. Yes, now we are complete. That is the general basic setup right there. You've got a spot here for um, uh, a rod and on the other side as well for a rod. A couple of spots to tie off a um, game clip, a bait tube, and a fish stick to measure your stuff with. You can put the wheels right there so you, they can come with you. Here's your seat right here, your cushion. There is your radio pliers, scissors, and fish grips. Your gaff is right here next to you. You've got your uh, dry bag right here. You've got your up on the bow. Here we go. Oh. Up on the bow, we got our life vest. So that is your basic setup. Just the basic necessities. If you want to go uh, catch some fish in the bay, maybe bring home a keeper halibut. Um, that sort of thing. 
Also, before I get on to the more advanced setups, this is, like I said, the bay, and in the bay, you're fishing for basically Corvina and for halibut. So on the description down below, and I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description down below, um, for the treble hook, the Carolina Keepers, and the J-hooks to make the uh, halibut rig, along with the, come along, come along, along with the three-way swivels, and you guys can get your lead anywhere you want. Um, but yeah, three-way swivel, J-hook, Carolina Keeper, and the treble, so you guys can make the halibut hooks. That will be in the description down below. I'll provide a link. Right on, guys. Before we get to the more advanced setup, I just wanted to say a couple of things. Number one is shout out to all the dudes I've been meeting on the water lately. Um, so many cool dudes, so many people, you know, yelling at me, Sand Dog, what's up? I watch your videos and that sort of thing. It's really, really super cool to see all the love, feel all the love on the water, dude. But fishermen in general are pretty cool, so yeah that's been happening a lot um the other thing is our subscribers are moving up quick last video we had a little over 700 now we're almost at 750 so thank you guys so much for subscribing uh supporting us we really 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 appreciate that and for those of you that haven't subscribed i'm gonna put a little thing up here in the corner right now bow and you can hit that little thing and subscribe to our channel right now it takes no time and helps us out so there you go thank you so much guys so basically, when I'm going big boy fishing out in La Jolla for big fish, sometimes I have my kill bag, sometimes I don't. A lot of times I'll have buddies that'll bring their kill bags, and so there's no need to have 20 kill bags with 20 dudes. Um, so I'll leave mine off, but I do have one in case I'm out there by myself or with someone who doesn't have any. Um, kill bags are nice, you throw one bag of ice in there, whatever fish you catch, you throw it in there, it stays cool all day, and the fish that you catch stays great. You're treating the fish with a little respect after you catch it, so it's a good thing to have one of these, keep the fish fresh. The other thing I'm doing is, I got two rods out, typically one on the right, one on the left, typically one is a fly line, and the other one is a something with some weight on it, usually a three to six ounce egg sinker to drag whatever it is I'm, I'm uh, using for bait further down than the rod on this side. And then I have a tube that I'm usually thrown out in front. Master baits fishing lures are typically what I'm throwing. Something from the Master baits line of lures um, is usually what I throw. And so I'll have one fly lining, one hanging out on the bottom, and then tossing a tube out ahead of me. So I'm doing the three pole thing out in La Jolla. I'm out there, I'm typically fishing pretty hard. Um, I'm not there to screw around. I'm there to try and catch some fish. So that's how you got to do it. I fish with pretty much all pen stuff. All my reels are, are pen. Um, I just like them. I think they're sturdy. I think they're great reels. I think they're uh, user friendly and, and they last a long time. So I'm, I'm basically a pen guy. This 400 bait caster here that I use when I'm trying to uh, toss around tubes and whatnot. And by the way, poles are something that I haven't settled on yet. So I'm trying to see if I can work out a deal with a couple of different people doing the making poles. So I don't know if I'm going to, I'm not going to put any links in any descriptions about poles or anything yet. Uh, that will be a future thing. But for the reels, I'm all pen. Um, like I said, that was a Squall 400. That's what I used to toss my tubes. Let me move you over here. The reels that I troll with are the uh, Pen Fathom. 15s these guys uh, have the clicker right here love the clicker action lever drag very easy to use and of course they are two speed so great poles for uh trolling and they've got 40 pounds of drag they've got an, the, the drag i'm looking for so these uh pin fathoms they don't mess around i've got two of them so there'll be one on this side one on this side, I will have my Lowrance fired up. You'll see we'll fire it up right here. This is a Lowrance HDS7 Live. Um, it's great. Uh, it's really, really good in shallower water, 100 feet or less. Um, shows you structure with the side scan, and it's just got a bunch of really great functions. I've got a lot of info saved in here. This thing's like a supercomputer. I've got, I've downloaded a lot of information off. Uh, the internet and got a lot of good information stored in here so that's one of the other things that's on here you got to get your mount you got to get your wires and whatnot ran through haul into the bottom now i've left this out right here this is my knockable battery right here i've got it out right now just so you can kind of see what it's like but it's just a little lithium ion battery 
Nakwa. This is what runs my fish finder right there. And it normally goes in this dry bag, like so. The dry bag gets rolled up. Boom. It gets put in the boat. It gets put in here, up behind and out of the way. And then that's what you use to power up your fish finder. The other thing you're gonna need because of all the connections, like for example, this connection right here that's down in the hull, you're gonna to wanna to get dielectric grease. Saves uh, from the corrosion. So once you have a fish finder, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and purchase this at the same time. Otherwise your uh, connections are gonna all get rotted real quick. Also, as you can see, I have the drop-in bait bucket. That thing is super, super handy. Um, when I'm fishing in the bay, it's the only thing I bring. I, I bring a few extra weights, a few extra hooks, a few extra swivels, um, a little extra string, um, a couple of tubes. Like, it's just really handy to have because once you get on the kayak, you'll realize less is more. The less stuff you can bring, the more happy you're gonna be. So I've got the bait bucket right there. Otherwise, it looks like this. It's just a void. Nothing there, you stick your hand in there, whatever it is, just travels around in and out of the boat. So it's good to have this bait bucket there to, uh, you know, make it a functional hole. The other thing I've got here is the GoPro Railblazer arm extension. It's a game changer, boys and girls. Go back and look at some of my older videos and see since I've been using this thing. My uh, videos, I mean, they've always been like okay, I guess, but having something stable on the boat to take good shots with makes all the difference in the world. So if you plan on making YouTube videos or you wanna make videos, I highly recommend getting one of these things, man. These, this thing is dope. Also have the Hobie Livewell right here. Lift this guy up. It's got a pump that goes down in through here sucks water from down there fills up the tank tank fills up there's a pipe up here and it dumps it down the other side out this side it's how you keep your sardines alive with sardines you can't have an aerator you got to have new water every three minutes so they're going to die so this recirculates the water throughout the bait tank and uh, keep any bait that you catch alive i highly 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 recommend the hobie bait tank if you have a bait tank you're going to need a battery so these are the batteries i use i've got everything disconnected right now but these are the batteries i use i use a lead acid battery for my bait tank um these duracell batteries they typically last me about a year before they start um you know just kind of whimpering out a little bit but uh you're gonna need the uh six volt five amp hour um lead acid battery and like i said i recommend the duracell brand um, you know, they're not crazy expensive and they'll last you about a year. And typically I use two in a day. One gets me till about 11.30 or 12 and then I put another one in and it gets me through the rest of the day. So don't forget your batteries for your bait tank. Hold on one second, let me put you on that uh, mount right there. I'd like to thank you guys for checking out this episode of Sand Dog Kayak Adventures. I hope this information is helpful to you guys. Um, I hope you guys can use it in one way, shape, or form. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments and hit me up um, about my reels, about my setup, about the boats to buy, uh, that kind of thing at all. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, but my goal is, I really just want as many people as, as they can to get out on the water, man. Kayak fishing is one of the funnest things I've ever done. I absolutely love it. I do it for a living and then when I'm off I do it for fun. That's how fun it is. So um, the more people I can help get on the water, get in a kayak, catching big fish, small fish, any kind of fish fish, uh, the happier I am. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Um, I hope this information was helpful. I will see you guys out on the water. Thank you so much for saying hi on the water so many of you guys. Tight lines and I will catch you next time. You.